The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick is often mistaken for a novel of alternate history, and it certainly fits that description. The book contains a what-if scenario that reshapes history. What if Napoleon won at Waterloo? What if John F. Kennedy survived his assassination? Or in the case of the man in the high castle, what if Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan triumphed in World War II? What if Donald Trump was Reich's Marshal of the Nazi States of America? What if Lady Gaga sang the flag high at the Super Bowl? And what if Barack Obama lived and died as prisoner N122-27703 in the Nazi penal system? The Amazon streaming adaptation of The Man in the High Castle was doomed to fail, despite fine performances and production design, because it missed the meaning of Philip K. Dick's novel, choosing instead a cliché story of parallel dimensions. If we want to get at the true meaning of The Man in the High Castle, we have to stop thinking of it as a novel of alternate history, and think of it instead as a novel of alternate story of competing plot lines, and of the war between narratives. Listen to the full audio commentary on this episode of Science Fiction by subscribing to the podcast 3 at damiangwalter.com forward slash podcast. Published in 1962, The Man in the High Castle would win the Hugo Award for Best Novel and establish Philip K. Dick as a master of science fiction. It also kick-started the most creative decade of Philip K. Dick's career, with novels including The Free Stigmata of Palmer Eldridge and Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, the inspiration for Blade Runner. Since his death in 1982, Philip K. Dick has become, arguably, the most famous science fiction author of the 20th century, helped by the movie Blade Runner and the prophetic quality of his storytelling. Philip K. Dick's science fiction stories had little to do with science. Instead, he used the symbols of science fiction, androids, time travel, alien encounters, and alternate history to express his own prophetic visions of the future. The Man in the High Castle is a prophecy written in the 1960s about one of the most important ideas to understand what's happening right here in the 2020s. A story about the power of stories, how stories shape our reality, and how the war between narratives defines our politics. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Does history arc towards justice and the inevitable rise of liberal democracy? Or are America and the West just new clothes on the same old emperor? Will a heating world require a full-scale abandonment of capitalist economic systems? Or can capitalism itself provide the answer to climate change? Are far-right conservatives turning towards fascism? Or is the political left threatening a new authoritarianism as it goes ever more woke? If you're shouting answers to these rhetorical questions right now, then thank you. But I'd like to suggest that these are not questions that any of us can answer. Instead, these are battle fronts. Contested borders, demilitarized zones between stories, fighting for power and control in this era of narrative warfare. An era that Philip K. Dick saw coming. Some of my fictional works were in a literal sense true. The Man in the High Castle shows us a world where Nazi Germany and the Axis forces triumphed in World War II. North America is divided between German and Japanese zones, and the American people have assimilated into this new story. The old story of the United States of America is still present as items of collectible Americana. Robert Children owns a store specializing in the remains of the former nation, items he trades with the new Japanese masters of San Francisco. The characters of the man in the high castle live small, 
frustrated lives, struggling with the constant feeling that these aren't the lives they're supposed to be living, that they are characters trapped in the wrong story. This feeling finds expression in a novel within the novel. The Grasshopper Lies Heavy is a cult novel that describes an alternate history within The Man in the High Castle's alternate history, in which Nazi Germany lost World War II, and America is the world's superpower. For several years, I've had the feeling, a growing feeling, that one day a woman who would be a complete stranger to me would contact me and tell me that she had some information to impart to me. And then she would appear at my door, just as Juliana appeared at Hawthorne Robinson's door. And that forthwith, in the gravest possible way, she would tell me exactly what Juliana told Robinson. And that is that my book, like his, was in a certain real, literal, and physical sense, not fiction, but the truth. There are not one but two men in high castles in Philip K. Dick's novel. The first is Hawthorne Abinson, the author of The Grasshopper Lies Heavy. From his high castle ranch in Wyoming, Abinson publishes his banned novel depicting a world where the Allies won World War II. As the characters The Man in the High Castle each travel to meet the reclusive Abinson, they find the world around them transforming into the reality his novel describes, the United States of the real 1962. Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan are defeated not by armies and navies, but by a story. The second man in the high castle is Adolf Hitler himself, who rules from his Berghof retreat high in the Alps. Hitler is never shown in the novel. We're told he is a syphilitic cripple who rules in name only. But Hitler lived to see his victory achieved. The Nazi Reich rolled out across Europe. The story of our world overwritten by the narrative of fascism. Confused? Perhaps no more so than any of us in our age of warring narratives. Ever have the feeling you're living in the wrong reality? That you're a loser in a story written by the victors? Philip K. Dick is here to tell you, maybe you are. Today, we live in a society in which spurious realities are manufactured by the media, by governments, by big corporations, by religious groups, political groups. So I ask, in my writing, what is real? Because unceasingly we are bombarded with pseudo-realities manufactured by very sophisticated people using very sophisticated electronic mechanisms. I do not distrust their motives. I distrust their power. They have a lot of it, and it is an astonishing power, that of creating whole universes. Universes of the mind, I ought to know. I do the same thing. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we are concerned about the trouble and trying to get responsible, one-sided news stories plaguing our country. Plaguing our country. Every day, every one of us is bombarded with the weapons of narrative warfare. When you pick up a newspaper, switch on the TV, or doom scroll your smartphone, you're under fire from the stories competing to live rent free in your mind. The narratives fighting to control your perception. Spurious realities are manufactured by a for hire industry of journalists, news channels, public relations people, advertising agencies, think tanks, political lobbyists, social media influencers, podcasters, public intellectuals, and many, many more who labor in the trenches of narrative warfare. Now in the era of GPT-4 and Midjourney 5, generative AI can generate spurious realities of photorealistic quality at the type of a prompt. Here, have Elon Musk, leader of the American Resistance, or SS Commandant Steve Jobs. It might be that none of us can really trust whether our beliefs are true, or a story manufactured to manipulate our reality. With The Man in the High Castle, Philip K. Dick was pointing to one of the great conundrums of modern life. 
When we attempt to judge competing narratives as true or false, we inevitably do so in relation to the narratives we already hold to be true. If the average American lived their life under German occupation, they would believe Nazi lies as completely as they believe the narrative of modern America. The answer Philip K. Dick guides us towards is an awareness of narratives themselves. Until we see how stories are used to shape our perceptions and reality, we're vulnerable to continued manipulation. But once we can think critically about the ways that narratives are constructed and the various agendas they serve, we can begin to assess objectively our own beliefs. That simple insight places the man in the high castle among the best guides to our 21st century world. The man in the high castle is only part of the answer. Learn more about the prophetic visions of Philip K. Dick here on science fiction.